Visit the country's largest RV super show in Tampa, Florida, on the next episode of Painting and Travel. Sarah talks with the president of Airstreet, while Roger paints one of their vintage trips. Sarah and I are just outside of Tampa, Florida, and both Sarah and I love to RV and travel the country. And these Airstreams are a really classic RV. We have, we're in a little compound of them right now. And I decided to do a small painting of them on an 11 by 14 inch piece of masonite. I made a sketch of this 1950s RV with charcoal. There's two RVs back here. I started to play with the composition a bit and place this other airstream in here, but I think one is enough. When the second one was in there, it almost looked like maybe a train cars connected together. So I think just one, I'll feature just one of these airstreams here. And of course, we've got the obligatory flamingo here, which adds a really nice touch. For my paints today, I have titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, I have three earth colors, my burnt sienna, yellow ochre, burnt umber. Then I have some chromium oxide green. For my brushes, I just have a few brushes. I have a three quarter inch flat brush, a, a few smaller flat brushes and a small pointed brush for some detail. While I tidy up my drawing here, let's join Sarah at the RV show. We're here at the Florida Super RV Show in Tampa, and we're gonna go in the entrance here and take a look at some wonderful ways to travel, all sorts of great recreational vehicles. During the RV Super Show, there's also a rally that takes place and people that have met each other in years past come, they park their vehicles, they bring their cars and their dogs and then they just have a, a get together for the entire show. Bob Wheeler and he is president and CEO of Airstream and we're inside one of these models and I'd like to know some of the history of Airstream. When did it start? 1931. It was uh, founded by a young entrepreneur named Wallace Merle Byam, Wally Byam, in his backyard. He started building kit trailers. He called them Airstreams because they glided down the road like a stream of air. Where are they manufactured? Jackson Center, Ohio. Jackson Center, Ohio. The company was founded in Los Angeles, but in the 50s relocated to Ohio, and now everything, all Airstreams you see on the road today are made in Jackson Center. So they're all handmade? Mm-hmm. Every trailer has about uh, 280 man hours. Um, every one of these rivets you see is put in by hand. It takes two people to put in every rivet. They're really made almost exactly the same way they were in the 1930s. They look a lot different on the inside, but the construction's the same. And what are some of the advances over the years, what are some of the amenities that you can get now in an Airstream? Well, when Airstreams first started out, they were really camping trailers. They didn't have bathrooms, they didn't have tables, they had 
beds that turned into couches so they didn't have permanent beds. Now, of course, you get all of those things. Fixed beds, tables, and all the systems. Bathrooms, refrigerators, microwaves, ovens, air conditioning, heating, hot water. It's everything you have in your house. Plus all the electronics now, of course. Flat screen TVs, Blu-ray DVD player, Bluetooth connectivity through the stereo, just like you have in a modern car. I know Roger's grandparents used to belong to the Tin Can Tourists. Is that still around? Yeah, that's still an active group. Uh, they're based, I believe, on the West Coast. And they're a subgroup of the larger Airstream Club. It's called the WBCCI, the Wally Byam Caravan Club International, founded in 1955 and still a very vibrant, the largest Airstream and RV owner group in existence. And do they have rallies where they meet up? Mm -hmm. uh, every weekend, every year, in every state, there's some group of Airstreamers getting together. Bob, it's been really nice talking with you, and I'm going to go find Roger, who I think is painting some vintage Airstreams. Very nice. Oh, it's probably some that went through your factory years past. <laughs> well, have a wonderful day. We'll see you later. Nice talking with you. Bye-bye. so many RVs to look at at the RV show. It's just amazing, isn't it? Well, I'm going to get started on this painting now. We have a very overcast day here, which is kind of nice. I was hoping it might be a little more sunny, although it's often difficult to sit out in the sun. But this uh, uh, gives me a nice, pleasant light to work with. If we had a little more sun, we might get some more reflections on these uh, on this Airstream, but this is a very nice uh, composition, I think. As is usually the case, I start with my darks. I'm going to mix ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna. I usually tone my board with a burnt sienna to undertone, but in this case, uh, this white board I think will work best because there's a lot of nice reflections on this Airstream, and I don't want a lot of uh, warm colors showing through. I want to keep these all very dark right to start with. Then I can lighten them up as I go. But for right now, I just want to put in my dark areas. I'm not worried about the colors yet. I'm more worried about the values and the tones. Wow, here comes the sun. Of course, that always changes everything, doesn't it? When you paint outside, the light changes, and uh, it, it, it often becomes a, a difficult problem and issue about painting. But I think this sun's going to pop in and out as, as we go on here. Some yellow ochre and chromium oxide green will give me this nice, dull, greenish color down here. An atomizer is a thing I always bring with me when I paint. If I spray my board, that just lets my paint flow so much easier over this board. I'm going to just ply it a little bit faster that way. I think this will be my center of interest right down in here. So I'm not going to play with that yet, but I'll continue on with these large basic shapes. Now, as I look at this, it's a problem to know, gosh, as always, what color these things are because it's, a, it's a, of course, it's, you know, aluminum, so it's a silver color. So it's catching light from just everywhere. It's catching light from the grass, it's catching light from the sky, from the trailer next to it, of all, all over the place. So uh, I've got yellows, I've got blues, I've got all sorts of colors. And it's, always, it's a little bit difficult to know what to start with as a base color. So I think I'll try some cerulean blue, a touch of burnt sienna, and some white. And again, I want to keep my values in the right order here. I don't want to get this too dark or too light. That's the most important thing right now is to just get the right value and approximate the right color. I'm using this three-quarter inch brush to lay this in quickly. And I'm going to lose a lot of my detail here, like this flamingo, as I go. But I'll be able to put that in at a later time. I'm going to keep this paint quite thin to start with. And to my surprise, some of this charcoal still shows through. Uh, the uh, paints in the water is not picking it all up, so I can see still see a few little details in there of my drawing. Looking back on this now, I think I should have probably sketched it in, maybe in charcoal, and then gone over it in pencil. That way I definitely wouldn't have lost those lines to work with. These acrylics are drying very fast out here, even though it seems to be quite damp today. I like the hint of that little propane tank right in front of this Airstream. Cerulean blue, white. It's probably the lightest part of my 
painting here will be this sky. I'll just suggest that right now. Okay, everything is covered, and that's the first step always I try to accomplish in a painting, is just get everything covered. These plants, even though they're a light green, sort of the background of those plants are, uh, are dark. So let's, so I'm going to mix up some ultramarine blue and even burnt umber, and we'll just put a very dark area down in here. I'll use the side of my brush. Now when I put the light leaves over this, I'll have some dark background to let those, allow those to show up. It's important to have good brushes while out in the field, at least some of the, some good brushes. A few beat up brushes are good too, but for scumbling around. But uh, this, these brushes, these flats here, have nice sharp points on them. So when I uh, want to make a sharp line, I can just use them on the side and create a nice sharp, sharp line. Once they get old, even just a little bit, that edge disappears and uh, it's not quite as easy to do. Well, even though the sun has come out now, I'm actually surprised at how little the colors and the values of the uh, Airstream has changed. And that's because I'm really looking into the light. So this side of it has not been affected so much. This trail over here to the right, it's changed quite a bit because the sunlight is hitting it. But uh, I've been saved somewhat from a lot of changes right off the bat because uh, everything is backlit here that I'm painting. Here I'm just establishing the drawing again. I want to get that curve just right so I can feel that aluminum wrapping around the rounded front of this. Let me see. So in my drawing this line here, I've got it a little bit high. I'm going to Actually, that this line, this one should come down almost to the bottom of this window. So let me change it. We might as well get this accurate. And this is sort of an historic vehicle here. So uh, maybe the second one should go up here. I think what I'm trying to do here is section little pieces of this off. You know, we've got little pieces here. We've got pieces here, here, and so on. Uh, and then I can sort of concentrate on each one of those sections. Now I'll start playing with these colors. I'm going to try and see these colors for what they are and maybe exaggerate them somewhat. Uh, right up in here, I'm seeing the reflections of these clouds. So I'm mixing some ultramarine blue and it's, it's very grayed down. So I'll put some burnt umber in that. I'll spray that board and that again will allow me to flow these colors over these dry colors a lot easier. And right on the edge we're picking up some of that sunlight or you know what it is it's it's a, a lot of the light being reflected off this trailer to the right. I'm seeing quite a bit of reflection down in this area here because of the grass so I think I have to be quite subtle with that because it doesn't jump out at me, but it, it certainly has a greenish, warm cast to it. So I think I'll make a, a grayish color here, but uh, make it lean towards green. We'll try that. I'm squinting my eyes as I do this because this bottom part of the trailer does seem to be quite a bit darker than this top area here. I hope I'm getting my values fairly accurate. It's hard to know if I'm getting the values accurate or not until I really get more into the painting. And then lots of times I have to change these halfway through the painting. And that's uh, another reason why I don't like to put in too much detail and too much attention to any one thing because if I do then I would hesitate to make changes that might be necessary later on simply because I had some time invested in it. But if I don't have much time invested in it, then uh, changes are a little bit easier to, uh, to make, you know, a little bit easier to handle. This Airstream is in pretty good shape. 
but uh, it does have a few little dents which give it some character. I like that. And a few of those dents are catching some of the highlights of the, of the sun here. It's almost like a patchwork quilt of colors up here. It's, it's amazing how many colors are in there, but they're all very subtle. They're all very gray, but they're there. Down low here, right under this carriage, it gets darker right down in here and it's reflecting all that grass. So that's going to be going to be very green down there. This hubcap is not very shiny. If it were, it would reflect all sorts of different colors of this grass, but it's, it's old and it's just been spray painted with silver paint. So it's not really catching a lot of the reflections. It's fairly flat. We got some lights and darks in there, but not picking up nearly as much color as the aluminum on the side. And we'll make that dark, really dark right down in there. And we have that doorstep that's <laughs> a little bit rusty and it's kind of hangs down. Well, now that I'm down in this area, let's take some yellow ochre and chromium oxide green and brighten up this grass in the very background. It's catching some of the light from the sun. We'll carry some of that light green area into the foreground here. We spray this. I see very little color in the shadow underneath the trailer, but there is some. So let's take ultramarine blue and chromium oxide green and we'll put some color underneath here. I'm going to have to invent something back here because this, I have a fence in the other airstream that actually goes here. So I'll invent something, maybe just some more trees, put some negative areas in there. So with cerulean blue and white, which is basically what my sky is, we can invent a few negative areas with some trees. And I'm sure I'll tidy these up later. And right now we'll just put some in to help this composition along, really. I'm going to get out another color and that will be my cadmium yellow. Because these little plants down here are very light color and with ultramarine blue and the cadmium yellow we'll I'll place a few I put some white in that too these are variegated leaves so I think I'll start out with the light colors on the leaves and maybe add the darker variation uh, later now you can maybe see why I put this dark down in here because if I put this light color over the over light areas, these leaves would not show up very well. Some of the leaves down lower, I think, are older, so they tend to be not quite as bright. Maybe they're dying off or something, so we'll make those a little bit warmer in color. And we can bring these leaves over this way. That will give some interest in this area, other than just having it come down and nothing happening there. Now I'll grab a very small brush. This is a number two pointed brush. We'll take lizard, I mean, uh, we'll take ultramarine blue and burnt umber. I've been using that combination, burnt umber and ultramarine blue since art school. It just <laughs> makes a really dark color. It's a good combination because you can make it cooler just by adding more ultramarine blue or making it warmer by adding some burnt umber. Uh, I think I used it for so many years almost as a crutch. Anything dark I would always pick up ultramarine blue and and burnt umber. I've tried to get away from that. It's uh, sometimes habits are hard to break. These flat hinges here are definitely catching some light right now. At least the one on the top there. We'll put that right there. Got the doorknob. The doorknob's catching a lot of light. And I'm looking at the bottom of the window, so it's right about at the bottom of the window there. Right now those hinges are jumping out at me way too much. But instead of changing the value of those hinges, I'm going to go back and change the value of, these, of this area down here because I think this is maybe too dark. Or at least it needs a little more patterns in here from the light bouncing around. I'm going to vary the blue color up here to make it somewhat different between here and there. 
when I started to put this in, I could see those clouds very clearly in the reflection now. But it's, uh, the light has changed and it's, the whole feeling of that is different. To keep some harmony and unity going on with all these reflections, I think I will take some of, for instance, this color here, and maybe take that same color and put it down in here. I don't, I want to keep this whole thing, you know, looking like it's all one, one piece. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't want to have this down here too much, too foreign from what this is up here. So even if I, I'm not seeing quite as much of this color down here as I am up here, I'm going to add some anyway, just to keep the painting uh, in, uh, in harmony. I'm trying to get this, give it a reflective look. Now when these, when the new ones are all polished, they just, they just really glow. But this one has, has some oxidation on it. And it's a, like I said, it was from the 1950s. So this has some, uh, some age and wear on it. Well, let me get a, uh, take my small brush. Oh, I think I'll need to get some cadmium red out. My palette's pretty full. Many times when I paint, I use a very limited palette, but today, um, put a lot of colors out. Here again, I don't really want a formula for anything. I just want to uh, be in the moment. If I see all these colors, then uh, I get them out on the palette. So I have some white and cadmium red, and I'm going to, with a couple strokes, try and put this flamingo in here. Now I'll start out with this flamingo using just one solid color. I don't know how these flamingos got to be such a popular symbol of Florida because they're not native to Florida at all, but they certainly have become a symbol of this part of the country. It's a little strange. <laughs> Let me see, we have a yellow bill up here. Put that right there. And the tip of their bill is black, so we'll take ultramarine blue and burnt umber make that dark color. I think on the top of this bird, I'll take some white and yellow ochre. Put the highlight right on the top of this bird right there. Well, now that I've fussed with all these colors down here, this green of this window doesn't bother me near as much. It's still not quite the right color, but you know, like I said, it's just when I add other things, it maybe takes the focus and the interest away from other things. So when I added the bird, my focus is not on this window quite as much, and so on. So everything affects everything else in a painting. Until the painting is done, you really can't tell whether things need changing. You just sort of have to guess at it. At least that's what I have to do. You know, I just accidentally put too much cerulean blue on here, but it looks good. So, you know, maybe I'll uh, add some more and we'll just go with that because we need some something going on here. So maybe that cerulean blue will just to add a touch of color to that sort of dead looking part of the painting. Painting is always full of surprises. Sometimes they're good and sometimes they're not, you know. <laughs> this may be premature to, to put these in. Probably is. Like I said, sometimes I just you just have to do something for fun, you know. Put something here. Some of these little posts get hidden behind these leaves so we'll just maybe suggest some of them and they'll disappear and every other post is high and one is high and one is low we'll change that back in the studio later well now it's getting to a point where in this painting where the details have to start to appear because i think i have the values set to where i want them at least the best best i can just running my finger along this the edge of this ruler to give me a Give me a guideline to make this straight line. Here we have that break in the aluminum and it follows right over here. These hard lines start to define this whole area, don't they? Let me get out my uh, red again. And we'll put some cerulean blue with this because I don't want it very bright. And We'll put that reflection right back here. I think I'll spray this first 
if I spray that, when I apply this paint, it's going to flow out some and uh, give me a soft edge. And I'll just feather that with my brush just lightly. I've enjoyed immensely being out here painting this vintage Airstream. It's been a, been a bit of a challenge, but I've liked what I've learned out here just by all these, observing all these reflections and these colors. Let's take it back into the studio now and put some finishing touches on it. Well, it didn't take much effort at all to finish this painting here in the studio. I just put a few more touches on it, not much, but here's what I did. Up in these trees, I was careful to keep this edge soft, to keep it in the distance. I added some sky holes and a bit of color. On the flamingo, I added some reflection right here in the airstream. I put a bit more color in these leaves right here, these variegated leaves. And then I worked on this fence. It was very bright light coming across the top of the airstream. So here I added a bit more yellow, made it very light. Right here, I added a few more details to this wheel and kept this shadow rather dark, but added a bit more color in there. I changed this curtain several times. It was a checkerboard curtain, but when I made it look like that, it just had too much texture and pattern, drew too much attention to it, so I kept this very simple. And really, that's all it took to finish this painting. Sometimes going too far with a painting can actually ruin it rather than improve it. So I'm going to leave it as it is, sign it, and we'll take one last final look. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.